This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Jennifer Crispin, Jefferson City, Missouri. The Divine Comedy by Dante Alighieri. Translated by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. Inferno, Canto 16-20. to Inferno, Canto 16. Now was I where was heard the reverberation of water falling into the next round, like to that humming which the beehives make. When shadows three together started forth, running from out a company that passed, beneath the rain of the sharp martyrdom. Towards us came they, and each one cried out, Stop thou, for by thy garb to us thou seemest to be some one of our depraved city. Ah, me, what wounds I saw upon their limbs, recent and ancient by the flames burnt in, it pains me still but to remember it. Unto their cries my teacher paused attentive. He turned his face towards me, and, Now wait, he said, to these we should be courteous. And if it were not for the fire that darts the nature of this region, I should say that haste were more becoming to thee than them. As soon as we stood still they recommenced the old refrain, and when they overtook us, formed of themselves a wheel, all three of them. As champions stripped and oiled are wont to do, watching for their advantage and their hold, before they come to blows and thrusts between them. Thus wheeling round did every one his visage direct to me, so that in opposite wise his neck and feet continual journey made. And, if the misery of this soft place bring in disdain ourselves and our entreaties, began one, and our aspect black and blistered, let the renown of us thy mind incline, to tell us who thou art, who thus securely thy living feet dost move along through hell. He in whose footprints thou dost see me treading, naked and skinless though he now may go, was of a greater rank than thou dost think. He was the grandson of the good Gualdrada, his name was Guido Guerra, and in life much did he with his wisdom and his sword. The other, who close by me treads the sand, Tegayo Aldobrandi is, whose fame above there in the world should welcome be. And I, who with them on the cross am placed, Jacopo Rustacucci was, and truly, my savage wife, more than aught else, doth harm me. Could I have been protected from the fire? Below I should have thrown myself among them, and think that the teacher would have suffered it? But as I should have burned and baked myself, my terror overmastered my good will, which made me greedy of embracing them. And I began, sorrow and not disdain, did your condition fix within me so, that tardily it wholly is stripped off. As soon as this my lord said unto me, words on account of which I thought within me, that people such as you are were approaching. I of your city am, and evermore your labors and your honorable names I with affection have retraced and heard. I leave the gall and go for the sweet fruits promised to me by the voracious leader, but to the center first I needs must plunge. So may the soul for a long while conduct those limbs of thine, did he make answer then, and so may thy renown shine after thee. Valor and courtesy, say, if they dwell within our city as they used to do, or if they wholly have gone out of it. For Guglielmo Borsier, who is in torment with us of late, and goes there with his comrades, doth greatly mortify us with his words. The new inhabitants and the sudden gains, pride and extravagance have in thee engendered, Florence, so that thou weepst thereat already. In this wise I exclaimed with face uplifted, and the three, taking that for my reply, looked at each other, as one looks at truth. If other times so little it doth cost thee, replied they all, to satisfy another, happy art thou, thus speaking at thy will. Therefore if thou escape from these dark places, and come to re-behold the beauteous stars, when it shall pleasure thee to say, I was, see that thou speak of us unto the people. Then they broke up the wheel, and in their flight it seemed as if their agile legs were wings. Not an amen could possibly be said, so rapidly as they had disappeared, wherefore the master deemed best to depart. I followed him, and little had we gone before the sound of water was so near us that speaking we should hardly have been heard. Even as that stream which holdeth its own course, the first from Monteveso towards the east, upon the left-hand slope of the Apennine, which is above called Aquaceta, ere it down descendeth into its low bed, and at Forli is vacant of that name reverberates there above San Benedetto, from Alps, by falling at a single leap, where for a thousand there were room enough. Thus downward from a bank precipitate, we found resounding that dark-tinted water, 
so that it soon the ear would have offended. I had a cord around me girt, and therewithal I Willum had designed to take the panther with the painted skin. After I this had all from me unloosed, as my conductor had commanded me, I reached it to him, gathered up, and coiled. Whereat he turned himself to the right side, and at a little distance from the verge he cast it down into that deep abyss. It must needs be some novelty respond, I said within myself, to the new signal. The master with his eye is following so. Ah, me! How very cautious men should be with those who not alone behold the act, but with their wisdom look into the thoughts. He said to me, Soon there will upward come what I wait, and what thy thought is dreaming must soon reveal itself unto thy sight. A to that truth which has the face of falsehood, a man should close his lips as far as may be, because without his fault it causes shame. But here I cannot, and, reader, by the notes of this my comedy to thee I swear, so may they not be void of lasting favor. Athwart that dense and darksome atmosphere, I saw a figure swimming upward come, marvelous unto every steadfast heart. Even as he returns who goeth down, sometimes to clear an anchor, which has grappled reef, or aught else that in the sea is hidden, who upward stretches and draws in his feet. End of Canto 16 Inferno, Canto 17 Behold the monster with the pointed tail, who cleaves the hills and breaketh walls and weapons. Behold him who infecteth all the world. Thus unto me my guide began to say, and beckoned him that he should come to shore, near to the confine of the trodden marble. And that uncleanly image of deceit came up and thrust ashore its head and bust, but on the border did not drag its tail. The face was as the face of a just man. Its semblance outwardly was so benign, and of a serpent all the trunk beside. Two paws it had, hairy unto the armpits, the back and breast and both the sides it had, depicted o'er with nooses and with shields. With colors more, groundwork or broidery, never in cloth did Tartars make, nor Turks, nor were such tissues by Arachne laid. As sometimes wearies lie upon the shore, that part are in the water, part on land, and as among the guzzling Germans there, the beaver plants himself to wage his war, so that vile monster lay upon the border, which is of stone, and shutteth in the sand. His tail was wholly quivering in the void, contorting upwards the envenomed fork, that in the guise of scorpion armed its point. The guide said, Now perforce must turn aside our way a little, even to that beast malevolent that yonder coucheth him. We therefore on the right side descended, and made ten steps upon the outer verge, completely to avoid the sand and flame. And after we are come to him, I see a little farther off upon the sand, a people, sitting near the hollow place. Then said to me the master, So that full experience of this round thou bear away, now go and see what their condition is. There let thy conversation be concise, till thou returnest I will speak with him, that he concede to us his stalwart shoulders. Thus farther still upon the outermost head of that seventh circle all alone, I went, where sat the melancholy folk. Out of their eyes was gushing forth their woe. This way, that way, they helped them with their hands, now from the flames and now from the hot soil. Not otherwise in summer do the dogs, now with the foot, now with the muzzle, when by fleas or flies or gadflies they are bitten. When I had turned mine eyes upon the faces of some, on whom the dolorous fire is falling, not one of them I knew, but I perceived that from the neck of each there hung a pouch, which certain color had, and certain blazon and thereupon it seems their eyes are feeding. And as I gazing round me come among them, upon a yellow pouch I azure saw, that had the face and posture of a lion. Proceeding then the current of my sight, another of them saw I red as blood, display a goose more white than butter is. And one, who with an azure sow and gravid and blazoned had his little pouch of white, said unto me, What dost thou in this moat? Now get thee gone, and since thou art still alive, Know that a neighbor of mine, Vitaliano, will have a seat here on my left-hand side. A Padoan am I with these Florentines. Full many a time they thunder in mine ears, exclaiming, Come the sovereign cavalier! He who shall bring the satchel with three goats. Then twisted he his mouth, and forth he thrust his tongue, like to an ox that licks its nose. And fearing lest my longer stay might vex him who had warned me not to tarry long, backward I turned me from those weary souls. I found my guide, who had already mounted upon the back of that wild animal, and said to me, Now be both strong and bold. Now we descend by stairways such as these. Mount thou in front, 
for I will be midway, so that the tail may have no power to harm thee. Such as he is who has so near the egg of Quartan that his nails are blue already, and trembles all but looking at the shade, even such became I at those proffered words. But shame in me his menaces produced, which maketh servant strong before a good master. I seated me upon those monstrous shoulders. I wished to say, and yet the voice came not as I believed, Take heed that thou embrace me. But he, who other times had rescued me in other peril, soon as I had mounted, within his arms encircled and sustained me, and said, Now, Geryon, bestir thyself. The circle's large, and the descent be little. Think of the novel burden which thou hast. Even as the little vessel shoves from shore, backward, still backward, so he thence withdrew. And when he wholly felt himself afloat, there where his breast had been he turned his tail, and that extended like an eel he moved, and with his paws drew to himself the air. A greater fear I do not think there was, what time abandoned fate on the reins, whereby the heavens, as still appears, were scorched. Nor when the wretched Icarus, his flanks felt stripped of feathers by the melting wax, his father crying, An ill way thou takest! Then was my own, when I perceived myself on all sides in the air, and saw extinguished the sight of everything but of the monster. Onward he goeth, swimming slowly, slowly, wheels and ascends, but I perceive it only by wind upon my face and from below. I heard already on the right the whirlpool, making a horrible crashing under us, whence I thrust out my head with eyes cast downward. Then was I still more fearful of the abyss, because I fires beheld and heard laments, whereat I trembling all the closer cling. I saw then, for before I had not seen it, the turning and descending by great horrors that were approaching upon diverse sides. As Falcon, who has long been on the wing, who, without seeing either lure nor bird, maketh the falconer say, Ah, me, thou stoopest, descendeth weary, whence he started swiftly, through a hundred circles, and alights far from his master, sullen and disdainful. Even thus did Geryon place us on the bottom, close to the bases of the rough-hewn rock, and being disencumbered of our persons, he sped away as arrow from the string. End of Canto 17 Inferno, Canto 18 there is a place in hell called Malabolge, holy of stone and of an iron color, as is the circle that around it turns. Right in the middle of the field malign there yawns a well exceeding wide and deep, of which its place the structure will recount. Round, then, is that enclosure which remains between the well and the foot of the high, hard bank, and has distinct in valleys ten its bottom. As where for the protection of the walls many and many moats surround the castles, the part in which they are a figure forms. Just such an image those presented there, and as about such strongholds from their gates, unto the outer bank are little bridges. So from the precipice's base did crags project, which intersected dikes and moats, unto the well that truncates and collects them. Within this place, down shaken from the back of Geryon, we found us, and the poet held to the left, and I moved on behind. Upon my right hand I beheld new anguish, new torments, and new wilders of the lash, wherewith the foremost bulge was replete. Down at the bottom were the sinners naked, this side the middle came they facing us, beyond it, with us, but with greater steps. Even as the Romans, for the mighty host, the year of jubilee upon the bridge, have chosen a mode to pass the people over, for all upon one side towards the castle, their faces have and go unto St. Peter's, on the other side they go towards the mountain. This side and that, along the livid stone, beheld I horned demons with great scourges, who cruelly were beating them behind. Ah, me! how they did make them lift their legs at the first blows, and sooth not any one, the second waited for, nor for the third. While I was going on, mine eyes by one encountered were, and straight I said, Already with sight of this one I am not unfed. Therefore I stayed my feet to make him out, and with me the sweet guide came to a stand and to my going somewhat back assented. And he, the scourged one, thought to hide himself, lowering his face, but little it availed him. For said I, Thou that castest down thine eyes, if false are not the features which thou bearest, thou art venedico cachanimico, but what doth bring thee to such pungent sauces? And he to me, unwillingly I tell it, but forces me thine utterance distinct, which makes me recollect the ancient world. I was the one who the fair Gisola induced to grant the wishes of the Marquis, however the shameless story may be told. Not the sole Bolognese am I who weeps here. Nay, rather is this place so full of them, that not so many tongues to-day are taught, 
twixt Reno and Savena to say Sipa. And if thereof thou wishest pledge or proof, bring to thy mind our avaricious heart. While speaking in this manner, with his scourge a demon smote him, and said, Get thee gone, Pander, for there are no women here for coin. I joined myself again unto mine escort. Thereafterward, with footsteps few, we came to where a crag projected from the bank. This very easily did we ascend, and turning to the right along its ridge from those eternal circles we departed. When we were there, where it was hollowed out, beneath to give passage to the scourged, the guide said, Wait, and see that on thee strike the vision of those others evil born, of whom thou hast not yet beheld the faces, because together with us they have gone. From the old bridge we looked upon the train which towards us came upon the other border, and which the scourges in like manner smite. And the good master, without my inquiring, said to me, See that tall one who is coming, and for his pain seems not to shed a tear? Still, what a royal aspect he retains! That Jason is, who by his heart and cunning the Colchians of the ram made destitute. He by the Isle of Lemnos passed along after the daring women pitiless had unto death devoted all their males. There with his tokens and with ornate words did he deceive Hypsipyle, the maiden who first, herself, had all the rest deceived. There did he leave her pregnant and forlorn. Such sin unto such punishment condemns him, and also for Medea is vengeance done. With him go those who in such wise deceive, and this sufficient be of the first valley, to know, and those that in its jaws its hold. We were already where the narrow path crosses athwart the second dyke, and forms that of a buttress for another arch. Thence we heard people, who are making moan in the next bolgia, snorting with their muzzles, and with their palms beating upon themselves. The margins were encrusted with a mould, by exhalation from below that sticks there, and with the eyes and nostrils wages war. The bottom is so deep, no place suffices to give us sight of it, without ascending the arches back where most the crag impends. Thither we came, and thence down in the moat, I saw a people smothered in a filth that out of human privies seemed to flow. And whilst below there with mine eye I search, I saw one with his head so foul with ordure, it was not clear if he were clerk or layman. He screamed to me, Wherefore art thou so eager to look at me more than the other foul ones? And I to him, Because, if I remember, I have already seen thee with dry hair, and thou art Alessio Interminie of Luca, therefore I eye thee more than all the others. And he, thereon, belaboring his pumpkin, the flatteries have submerged me here below, wherewith my tongue was never surfeited. Then said to me the guide, See that thou thrust thy visage somewhere farther in advance, that with thine eyes thou well the face attained, of that uncleanly and dishevelled drab, who there doth scratch herself with filthy nails, and crouches now, and now on foot is standing. That's the harlot, is it, who replied unto her paramour, when he said, Have I great gratitude from thee? Nay, marvellous! And herewith let our sight be satisfied. End of Canto 18 Inferno, Canto 19 O Simon Magus, O forlorn disciples, ye who the things of God which ought to be the brides of holiness rapaciously, for silver and for gold do prostitute, now it behooves for you the trumpet sound, because in this third bolgia ye abide. We had already on the following tomb ascended to that portion of the crag, which o'er the middle of the moat hangs plumb. Wisdom supreme, O oh, how great art thou showest in heaven, in earth, and in the evil world, and with what justice doth thy power distribute. I saw upon the sides and on the bottom the livid stone with perforations filled, all of one size, and every one was round. To me less ample seemed they not, nor greater than those that in my beautiful St. John are fashioned for the place of the baptizers, and one of which, not many years ago, I broke for some one who was drowning in it. Be this a seal all men to undeceive. Out of the mouth of each one there protruded the feet of a transgressor, and the legs up to the calf, the rest within remained. In all of them the souls were both on fire, wherefore the joints so violently quivered, they would have snapped asunder with some bands. Even as the flame of unctuous things is wont to move upon the outer surface only, so likewise was it there from heel to point. Master, who is that one who writhes himself? More than his other comrades quivering, I said, and whom a redder flame is sucking. And he to me, if thou wilt have me bear thee down there along that bank which lowest lies, 
from him thou'lt know his errors and himself. And I, what pleases thee to me is pleasing. Thou art my lord, and knowest that I depart not from thy desire, and knowest what is not spoken. Straightway upon the fourth dyke we arrived. We turned, and on the left-hand side descended down into the bottom, full of holes and narrow, and the good master yet from off his haunch, deposed me not, till to the hole he brought me, of him who so lamented with his shanks. Whoe'er thou art that standest upside down, O doleful soul, implanted like a stake, to say began I, if thou canst, speak out. I stood even as the friar who is confessing the false assassin who, when he is fixed, recalls him so that death may be delayed. And he cried out, Dost thou stand there already? Dost thou stand there already, Boniface? By many years the record lied to me. Art thou so early satiate with that wealth, for which thou didst not fear to take by fraud, the beautiful lady, and then work her woe? Such I became, as people are who stand, not comprehending what is answered them, as if bemocked, and know not how to answer. Then said Virgilius, Say to him straight away, I am not he, I am not he thou thinkest. And I replied as was imposed on me. Whereat the spirit writhed with both his feet, then sighing with a voice of lamentation, said to me, Then what wantest thou of me? If who I am thy carest so much to know, that thou on that account hast crossed the bank, know that I vested was with the great mantle, and truly was I son of the she-bear, so eager to advance the cubs, that wealth above and here myself I pocketed. Beneath my head the others are dragged down, who have preceded me in simony, flattened along the fissure of the rock. Below there I shall likewise fall. Whenever that one shall come who I believed thou wast, what time the sudden question I proposed. But longer I my feet already toast, and here have been in this way upside down, than he will plant and stay with reddened feet. For after him shall come a fouler deed, from towards the west a pastor without law, such as befits to cover him and me. New Jason will he be, of whom we read in Maccabees, and as his king was pliant, so he who governs France shall be to this one. I do not know if I were here too bold, that him I answered only in this metre. I pray thee tell me now how great a treasure our Lord demanded of St. Peter first, before he put the keys into his keeping. Truly, he nothing asked but follow me. Nor Peter nor the rest asked of Matthias, silver or gold, when he by lot was chosen, unto the place the guilty soul had lost. Therefore stay here, for thou art justly punished and keep safeguard over the ill-gotten money which caused thee to be valiant against Charles. And were it not that still forbids it me the reverence for the key's superlative thou hadst in keeping in the gladsome life, I would make use of words more grievous still, because your avarice afflicts the world, trampling the good and lifting the depraved. The evangelist you pastors had in mind, when she who sitteth upon many waters to fornicate with kings by him was seen, the same who with the seven heads was born, and power and strength from the ten horns received, so long as virtue to her spouse was pleasing, ye have made yourselves a god of gold and silver, and from the idolater how differ ye, save that he won, and ye a hundred worship. Ah, Constantine, of how much ill was mother, not thy conversion, but that marriage dower which the first wealthy father took from thee. And while I sang to him such notes as these, Either that anger or that conscience stung him, he struggled violently with both his feet. I think in sooth that it my leader pleased, with such contented lip he listened ever, unto the sound of true words expressed. Therefore with both his arms he took me up, and when he had me all upon his breast, remounted by the way where he descended, nor did he tire to have me clasped to him, but bore me to the summit of the arch, which from the fourth dyke to the fifth is passage. There tenderly he laid his burden down tenderly on the crag, uneven and steep, that would have been hard passage for the goats. Thence was unveiled to me another valley. End of Canto 19 Inferno, Canto 20 Of a new pain behooves me to make verses and give material to the twentieth canto of the first song, which is of the submerged. I was already thoroughly disposed to peer down into the uncovered depth which bathed itself with tears of agony, and people saw I through the circular valley, silent and weeping, coming at the pace which in this world the litanies assume. As lower down my sight descended on them, wondrously each one seemed to be distorted from chin to the beginning of the chest, for towards the reins the countenance was turned, 
and backward it behooved them to advance, as to look forward had been taken from them. Perchance, indeed, by violence of palsy, some one has been thus wholly turned awry, but I ne'er saw it, nor believed it can be. As God may let thee, reader, gather fruit from this thy reading, think now for thyself, how I could ever keep my face unmoistened. When our own image near me I beheld, distorted so the weeping of the eyes, along the fissure bathed the hinder parts. Truly I wept, leaning upon a peak of the hard crag, so that my escort said to me, Art thou, too, of the other fools? Here pity lives when it is wholly dead. Who is a greater reprobate than he, who feels compassion at the doom divine? Lift up, lift up thy head, and see for whom opened the earth before the Thebans' eyes. Wherefore they all cried, Whither rushest thou? Amphiaros? Why dost leave the war? And downward seized he not to fall amain, as far as Minos, who lays a hold on all. See, he has made a bosom of his shoulders, because he wished to see too far before him. Behind he looks, and backward goes his way. Behold Tiresias, who his semblance changed, when from a male a female he became, his members being all of them transformed, and afterwards was forced to strike once more the two entangled serpents with his rod, ere he could have again his manly plumes. That Aaron's is, who backs the other's belly, who in the hills of Luni, where there grubs the Cararese who houses underneath. Among the marbles white a cavern had for his abode, whence to behold the stars, and see, the view was not cut off from him. And she there, who is covering up her breasts, which thou beholdest not with loosened tresses, and on that side has all the hairy skin, was Manto, who made quest through many lands, afterwards tarried there where I was born, whereof I would thou list to me a little. After her father had from life departed, and the city of Bacchus had become enslaved, she a long season wandered through the world. Above in beauteous Italy lies a lake, at the Alps' foot that shuts in Germany, over Tyrol, and has the name Benico. By a thousand springs, I think, and more is bathed. Twixt Garda and Valcamonica, Panino, with water that grows stagnant in that lake. Midway a place is where the Trentine pastor, and he of Brescia, and the Veronese might give his blessing if he passed that way. Sitteth Peschiera, fortress fair and strong, to front the Brescians and the Bergamasks, where round about the bank descendeth lowest. There of necessity must fall whatever in bosom of Benico cannot stay, and grows a river down through verdant pastures. Soon as the water doth begin to run, no more Benico is it called, but Mincio, far as Governo, where it falls in Po. Not far it runs before it finds a plain, in which it spreads itself and makes it marshy, and oft is wont in summer to be sickly. Passing that way, the virgin pitiless land in the middle of the fen descried, untilled and naked of inhabitants. There to escape all human intercourse, she with her servants stayed, her arts to practice, and lived, and left her empty body there. The men thereafter who were scattered round collected in that place, which was made strong by the lagoon it had on every side. They built their city over those dead bones, and after her who first the place selected, Mantua named it, without other omen. Its people once within more crowded were, ere the stupidity of Casalodi, from Pinamonte had received a seat. Therefore I caution thee, if e'er thou hearest originate my city otherwise, no falsehood may the verity defraud. And I, my master, thy discourses are to me so certain, and so take my faith, that unto me the rest would be spent coals. But tell me of the people who are passing, if any one noteworthy thou beholdest, for only unto that my mind reverts. Then said he to me, He who from the cheek thrusts out his beard upon his swarthy shoulders, was, at the time when Greece was void of males, so that there scarce remained one in the cradle, an augur, and with Calcans gave the moment an alias, when to sever the first cable. Eryphilus his name was, and so sings my lofty tragedy in some part or other, that knowest thou well, who knowest the whole of it. The next, who is so slender in the flanks, was Michael Scott, who of a verity magical illusions knew the game. Behold Guido Bonatti, behold us Dente, who now unto his leather and his thread would fain have stuck, but he too late repents. Behold the wretched ones who left the needle, the spool, and rock, and made them fortune-tellers. They wrought their magic spells with herb and image. 
but come now for already holds the confines of both the hemispheres and under seville touches the ocean wave cane and the thorns and yesternight the moon was round already thou shouldst remember well it did not harm thee from time to time within the forest deep thus spake he to me and we walked the while end of canto twenty end of inferno canto sixteen to twenty this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org recording by jennifer crispin jefferson city missouri